everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. I am so excited to have you here today and before we get started, be sure that you're following me over on Instagram. I post lots of fun tips, tricks, and hacks over there so you don't want to miss out. Now today's video is one that was requested a couple of times actually from you guys and I love making tutorials for you so if you're ever looking for something specific, let me know. You can reach out to me on any of my social media channels or you can always comment on one of my videos. I am going to make you guys a mini desk calendar. Now I had not seen these before until you guys started asking about them, but they are so cute and so fun. And what's great is you can make them in any theme that you want and I'm going to show you how to make it. I'm using Mickey images, but with this tutorial you can use any images that you like. I'm also going to show you how you can denote like birthdays or things like that on your calendar. And this is all done using print and cut and some cardstock so it's a really inexpensive project as well. So I've done all 12 months with all these different Mickeys and I'll give you guys some up close views of these as well. But this was a really super easy project. It was a little tedious because I changed some fonts on each of my calendars, but I'll link everything that we're using down below, including the calendar SVG that I used to do this. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you'll need to create your calendar is a calendar and I'm not going to make my own because that would take forever. So I can just download a calendar template here. I'm going to use this one from Creative Fabrica. I will link it down below. All you have to do is click download. It's going to open up a folder, ask you where you want to save it. So for this, I'm going to save it in my four videos only and click save. Then what I want to do is I'm going to download that and it's you'll see that there's a zipped folder. We want to open that zipped folder and then we want to extract all from this. All you have to do is click extract all and then click extract. Now it might take a second to extract it, but sometimes it's pretty quick. It just depends. Now I will say don't love how this folder is set up because they have a compressed folder and then they have multiple more compressed folders in this. So I'm going to go ahead and extract this folder here. So I need to open it and then I need to click extract all and extract again. So it's just a lot of extracting, but it's fine. It just takes you a second. I'm going to close these out because we're going to use this one right here. So let's head over to Design Space and upload this. Over in Design Space, simply click Upload and then you're going to upload your image. Now this has been a little bit glitchy and slow today, so hopefully it'll go okay. I'm gonna click Upload Image and then I always just drag and drop. So I'm gonna grab the, the, uh, the January, I'm gonna start with January, drag that over and you'll see that it has no background. I'm gonna click Complex and click Continue and then you don't have to do anything here. We can eventually get rid of this if we don't want it, really up to you. Then just simply click Apply and Continue. You wanna save this as the print and cut image. It's really hard to read. Don't worry, it won't be that hard to read once we actually make this. Now you'll need to upload every single month individually. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything uploaded and then I'll come back and we'll go ahead and show you how to design your own little mini desk calendar. Once you have all of your months uploaded, go ahead and select all of them. We're just gonna click on all of them. It doesn't really matter what order you click on them in and then add it to the canvas. Now we can edit these from here and add some fun elements or designs. We can even change the name of the months, like the font that's there. And I'm gonna show you how to do that because I wanna make these a little bit more like my aesthetic and like what I like. Now I know it looks a little bit crazy right now, but don't worry, this is just because it's stacked them all. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pull them all over here. I don't care what order they're in. I just wanna work with one month at a time. So I'm just gonna drag these all over until I get to January. Now, like I said, I don't love some of the elements on this, but I wanted the calendar part. So I'm gonna show you how we can change this up so that it's more our aesthetic. We're actually gonna be using Slice, which is a fantastic option for working with your design space. I'm gonna be using Slice to get rid of the January and then I just wanna get rid of the 2024 as well. It's just not something I care to have on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open Shapes and I'm gonna grab a square. I'll duplicate that square just so I can use it for this calendar and then I'll do the rest of these off camera so you don't have to watch me go through them because it's all the same exact version of doing this. So now that I have a square, let me duplicate this really quick just so I don't have to open up another square. Now there is a lot for Cricut Design Space to like handle on screen right now. So sometimes you may want to just load like one at a time, but because I'm showing you how to do this, I just load them all at once. I'm gonna take my square and I wanna make it so that it fully covers the word January. Then I wanna select that square and the calendar 
and all I simply want to do is click the word slice right here at the bottom. Now again, this might take a second because there is a lot on my Design Space screen, but once it slices, you're going to see that I'm going to have this great option to be able to pull that like day, the, the name of the month off. Now that it's sliced, you'll see that I can delete the square that I used. I can delete the gray version of January. And I can also delete the black version of January, which was the original one that was sitting on our calendar to start with. Now, like I said, Design Space is going really, really slow today. So it's just because I have a lot of stuff on here. Now I want to get rid of the 24 as well. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to move that square so that it will slice off the 24. And then I'll show you how we're going to add in our own design and our own text to create the month that we want to use because I don't like that font. Like it's just not for me. And I have a way cuter version that will just match the vibes better. I can go ahead and delete all the parts of my slice. And like I said, it's going a little slow. So give it a second. I'm gonna delete the rest of these just cause they're causing this to run really slow. I'll come back to them later, it's fine. I just wanna show you how to do this. So now that we have the just the calendar itself, you wanna of course remember what month you're on. I'm gonna add my text and I'm just gonna have it say January. I wanna move this up a little bit so you guys can actually see it. And I wanna change the font. I have a font that is called Waltograph, it's a free font. And it's like the Disney font. And I just think it'll look way better with the pictures that I'm going to be using for my calendar. Now what I can do is I can select both items and I can use a line and I can center that word just so that it's there. Now you can change the color of this if you want to. So if you want to do it red, if you want to do it blue, if you want to do whatever color you want to do green, it doesn't matter. It's up to you and the design that you want to go with. Me personally, I'm going to leave it black, but you can change them up however you want. The next thing we want to do is we're going to select the entire design and I want you to use the word flatten. That's going to tell Design Space that the January part is print and cut and it goes with the rest of the calendar. That way we are able to work with that and have that fit a little bit better like it'll tell Design Space that's all one piece. Now I'm going to just work with January but I will show you like how to do the characters on the top but I'll show you first how to do it in January and then we'll go quicker with the other ones. So with January the first thing that you want to do is you want to make a square that it's going to sit on or like whatever size you want your calendar to be. It's too big right now, but I'll size it down once I kind of play around with my square and how big I want it to be based on my calendar. So I like to just make a square and I make it kind of big. Then I'm gonna click send it to the back and then I wanna play around kind of with the sizing and how big I want it to be on my calendar. You're gonna make all of your calendars the exact same size, so it's really important to kind of play with it, figure out how big you want it, whatever you wanna do with it. Once you're happy with the sizing, what I always like to do is I select both of my items, I align them and I center them just to make sure that it looks nice and even. I also wanna make sure to change the back round of my uh, square here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to change this to white and that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to show you just something that I think is a little fun and a little extra that you could do. I'm going to actually use Design Space Images and what I want to search for is I'm going to just search for a cake. You can use anything that you want but we'll just kind of denote birthdays right now and I'm just going to use a little cake to denote that it's somebody's birthday. So we can just go through Find a cake that you like that matches, you know, kind of your style or whatever you want it to look like. You don't have to use a cake. You can use balloon. You can use whatever you want. I just thought a cake would be really fun. So let me find a cake I like and I'll show you how to add this to your calendar. I think this cake is super cute. So we're going to use this one and I'm going to click add to canvas. Now don't worry that this cake is going to come across in a bunch of layers. That's totally fine. This is actually designed to be cut, but we're not going to do that. So before I do anything else, I'm going to flatten it. And that's going to tell Design Space that I want to just use this as a print and cut image. What we'll do is we're going to size this down and I want to size it down so that it's going to fit behind our number. Now it's going to sit in front of it right now. Don't worry. So I'm going to just denote 
my birthday today. So you can do this any way that you want. So maybe I don't want it to sit behind it. Maybe I want to sit next to it now that I think about it. But that will denote that that is somebody's birthday. You can do any kind of designs that you want to. It's truly up to you and the way you want your calendar to look and be. Now that I'm kind of looking at it, I do think I want to add a little more space at the bottom of my calendar just because I think it'll look a little neater if I do it that way and I'll have a little more room for things like the cake if they're in the last you know couple days of the month. You could do anniversaries, you could do school events, whatever you may want to do to this, you can do this before you actually print and cut it. So now that I've denoted my birthday, you can denote anything you want on here, but that's just sort of an idea for you. Next thing I want to do is I want to select the entire design and I'm going to flatten it again because you need to make sure that after you add anything to it that you're flattening it. If you don't flatten it, Cricut Design Space will cut out each individual piece. Now, I found a bunch of little Mickey Mouse designs that I got off of Google, so I'm going to upload one of those to my images here. So I'm going to click Upload Image and I'm just going to go into my four videos only because I know that he's in here. I just titled them by the month. So I've got January Mickey. Look how cute he is. He's like a little like winter Mickey. So I'm going to go ahead and put him on to my design space. I just simply upload him. He's a PNG with a transparent background, so I don't need to do any work with him. I can just apply and continue, save him as a print and cut image and click upload. Then I wanna add them to my canvas. Now you're gonna do this for each month with whatever design, whatever character you want. Now I will say now that we've flattened our design, it is a little tougher to see where the edges are. So what I personally like to do is I'm gonna change the color of my canvas just to like a dark gray so I can see this a little bit better. Now our little Mickey man, he's gonna need an offset in order to A, not cut real weird on these little edges and B, just look a little bit better on our calendar. So what I do is I just add an offset by clicking offset. And then all I simply need to do is adjust that offset to where I'm happy with it. It doesn't matter what anyone else says, you do you and the way you want your offset to look. Nobody can tell you yes or no, you do it the way you want. Then I'm gonna simply click apply. It's gonna add my offset and it always defaults to black, but I want my offset to be white, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that. The next thing I'm gonna do is select both items and I'm going to flatten that again, just so that when I pull it around and move it to fit it onto my January, it doesn't actually move around and it's gonna be print and cut so we need to flatten it anyways. Now he's really big and I don't want him that big, that is way too big. So what I'm gonna do is size him down to a part where I'm kind of happy with his sizing so that I can just decide if like I like that size or do I want him a little bigger or do I want him smaller? You do you and whatever makes you happy. There's no wrong way to make these. So now that I've got him kind of where I'm happy, I think that's a decent size for him. What I'm going to do is select him and select my calendar and you again want to flatten. Flatten is gonna tell Design Space that we don't want it to cut around the bottom of our Mickey. We want it to cut all as one single shape. Now, obviously this is pretty big for like those mini desk calendars. So I will size it down a bit and I'm more so looking at the width and less so the height. So I kind of am thinking I don't wanna go any bigger than about five inches wide. And if you want it exact, you can definitely use the measurements up here if you just wanna give it a good old a five areno up here, just type five and it's good. I think that looks pretty decent. I think it's gonna be really, really cute. Now you're gonna see that we have a warning up here. This right here is gonna tell you that the image will print poorly. It's a glitch in design space. So if you're seeing that, just know that there's, there's no problem with your image. It's a problem with design space. Now I will highly recommend clicking save and saving it as you go. So I'm gonna save it as mini calendar and I'm just gonna click save. Now we can start working with adding additional items to our designs here. We can add the rest of the months. We can start adding the rest of the characters. So I'll do one more really quick. Um, when I add the character, I'll show you that because we need to put them over to the side a little bit so that when it's sitting on your desk, you can see all your little characters. So let me go ahead and get February started and kind of moved around and get that one going. And then from there, we can very easily finish the rest. I've got February ready to go. I don't really you know, want to denote anything on there. You could totally put like a heart for Valentine's Day. Actually, we'll do that super quick because that'll take two seconds. I'm just gonna use a shape and a little heart and then we can just put it over on the 14th and 
make it a little smaller. It's sometimes really hard to get, once you make it small, like to actually access that shape. So sometimes you can just use this up here to like make it way littler, but you see how it makes it like way, way little. And then all of a sudden it flipped it. I don't know. Sometimes design space has a mind of its own and I don't know what it's doing with its life, but I'm just going to kind of scooch it with my mouse and we'll just, it's fine. Wherever it is, it's fine. And we'll just make it pink. That's fine. I'm going to select everything and flatten. That way it's all done. Now we want to add our February character. So all we need to do here is click upload and then again, upload the image and we can find the Mickey we're going to use for February. He's of course in the calendar. I just have to locate him. I called him Valentine Mickey. So we'll just go ahead and put him in. I'm going to choose complex again. Again, he's a PNG. We don't have to do anything. Just click apply and continue. Select him, upload, and he's good to go. Go ahead and add him to the canvas. Now again, I'm gonna add an offset to him, do all the things, but I'm gonna show you um, why we needed like to do it with the other calendars so that you can actually like line everything up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that offset and I believe we used the 0.11 on the other one. So let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good, especially with his little tail sticking out. I do wanna make sure that that is a little bit thicker than what it normally would be. Select him and flatten him. And then what I want to do is I'm going to pull my February calendar on top of January. Then I'm going to use this Mickey here, his little winter Mickey, to adjust how large the Valentine's Day Mickey is going to be. Because I obviously don't want him gigantic compared to winter Mickey, but I don't want him to be teeny tiny either. So I think that's a pretty good size for what we're working with. So now I'm going to select my Mickey and select my calendar for February and I'm gonna flatten them. Now I'm gonna go ahead and right click this and send this to the back and that's what it'll look like when you're looking at your calendar on January. And then when you take your January off, you'll see February by itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of these. But if you guys have questions, please leave those in the comments. I'm so happy to help you guys with these designs. Um, I'm more than happy to kind of guide you if you have any more questions. I just don't think you need to watch me do this a bunch more times. I did want to come back and show you one thing because I do have a couple JPGs, which means they have backgrounds on them for my images. So I want to choose complex again and click continue. Now I'm just going to click on the white background, but I want to do one really quick thing. I want to preview my cut image because do you see how it's all like jaggedy? That's really bad. And it's going to be really bad if you try to do it like that with a print and cut even because it's going to end up with really jagged edges. So what I want you to do is I want you to go down into more options and I want you to change your color tolerance to 100. Then I want you to click on the white background and remove it. And then when you cl pr click preview your cut image, look at how much clearer that is. So much nicer, so much more smooth. So that's one little trick you can do to make sure you're getting a really good print and cut edge. Then I wanna save them as a print and cut image and upload them. Everything else is the same steps. I just wanted to show you how to upload an image with a background and make sure you get a good quality edge. Now that I have all of my designs done, flattened, put together, so this is everybody. I think I need to go back and unhide a few. So I hid some of them just to make design space run a little bit better. So all I'm gonna do here is just unhide and you'll notice that a lot of them say, you know, have that little uh, warning, just ignore it. So I'm just going to double check that I have everybody January, February, March, December, November, October, September, August, July, June, May, April. Okay, we've got everybody. So I'm going to select all, which you can do that with the little select all button up here. Then I want to align them and I'm just going to center them all. This is so that I can resize them a little bit. They're a little bit bigger than I think I want to go. So they're about five and a half inches by about um, like six, according to this, but we're, we know we're closer to five. But if you want to resize these because they are kind of big, you need to make sure you have everybody selected and you resize them all at the same time. If you do not resize these all at the same time, what you're going to end up with is a bunch of designs that are just not at all correct. They end up being like miss size, you've got some that are bigger, some that are smaller. So you just want to make sure you resize them all at the same time. So now we have all of our designs. I want to make sure that I save my project 
And from here, all we'll simply have to do is click make. I'm gonna use my maker for this, which is a perfect item, but you could use your Joy Extra, your Explorers, whatever you have really, except the Joy. Now I'm gonna take a look and see, and we should be able to fit, I hope, two at least per sheet of cardstock. If not, I'll see if I can kind of fidget them around to fit them, but it should fit okay. So it looks like, yes, we can pretty much fit two per sheet. They're setting them up a little bit weird, but you can see they're all here. Now it will look like there is no background to them because we are using a white background on these and it won't you won't see like any of the cut lines or anything. But what we'll do from here is that we are going to print these out and I'm just gonna use cardstock. You don't have to use anything crazy. You don't have to go out and buy something that costs a fortune. Just a decent like 65 pound cardstock will work fine. You can find some at Walmart, Michaels, I'll link some below. So I'm gonna hit continue and I'm going to print these out. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna click send to printer and you wanna do a few settings on this to make sure that you're gonna get a good quality print for like the top picture. The black and like parts where the words are, eh, those will be okay, but I really wanna make sure that my pictures come out nicely. I'm going to use my inkjet printer. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn bleed off. We don't need it for this. Everything is white around our images, so I'm not worried about it cutting off at all. Then I wanna use system dialog. Now from here, click print, but it's not gonna send it to your printer. It's actually gonna open up our printer preferences, which is gonna allow us to choose some things to make sure that we're gonna get a really nice print. I wanna click where it says preferences. Before that though, make sure that you have the right printer selected. I'm gonna choose preferences. I wanna make sure I have my correct document size, and then I change my paper type to premium presentation paper matte. I change my quality to high, and I always make sure that color is selected. Now do one more thing, because this is gonna help you make sure you get a really good print. Go under more options and turn off your high speed print. Then simply click OK and click print to send it to your printer. You'll need to do that for each individual page. Once you've done that, we'll take you back over to the machine and we're gonna show you how these cut out and what it looks like when it's all finished. We're ready to cut these on our Cricut Maker. So all I've done is I put them in order of where they're you know, gonna print. You wanna make sure when you're loading this that you're loading it with the top of your sheet at the top of your mat. And then you just wanna make sure it's well held down. The next thing we're gonna do is load this so you'll see that this is the top of my sheet. I'm gonna load this into my Cricut, allow this to cut. I'm just gonna go through and cut all of them out and then we'll show you what it looks like when it's all finished. I do wanna make sure to tell you guys that when you're gonna take these off your mat, I want you to be careful, but the first thing I'm gonna do is just check my cut. I cut these on medium cardstock, which should be perfect for this 65 pound cardstock, which it was. But what I want you to do is when you take these off of your mat, I want you to flip your mat upside down so that the back of the mat is facing you. And then I want you to roll your mat back so that when you take these off, they don't curl. It's really important that these stay laying flat. So I'm gonna do that for both of my pieces here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting. Now I did accidentally get him stuck to the mat, so he's a little curled now, but I'll fix him, it's no big deal. But I'm gonna go ahead and get these finished cutting and we can put them all together. I absolutely love how this project came out and thank you guys so much for requesting this tutorial. This was really, really fun. So I'm gonna show you each of the months here. And like I said, you saw in the video, I changed the font, I took off the 2024. So when you make these, you can do them however you want. You can use characters, you can use flowers, you could use pictures of your family if you wanted to. You can literally do anything you want. So let your imagination run wild with these. And as I showed, you can totally mark off special days, anniversaries, birthdays, whatever you might wanna mark on your calendar, you can do that. There is no wrong way to make these. You make what makes you happy because it's crafting and it should be whatever you enjoy.
Now, if you have any questions, please let me know in those comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. And of course, if you have a tutorial that you'd like to see, let me know. Reach out to me on any of my social media channels. I'm always happy to make tutorials that you all want to see and want to know how to make. I hope that I try to make them as easy to understand as I possibly can for you guys. I really don't want crafting to be complicated. I hope you all have a magnificent day and as always, happy crafting.